Hello everyone, welcome to Talent Sprint. In this session, we are going to discuss about the problems on calendars, which is very common in many competitive exams. This is a very interesting area where we have to find out the day of the week for the given date. And the questions here can be classified into two broad categories. Category 1, where we need to find out the day of the week for the given date when some other date and day is specified. And category 2, where we need to find out the day of the week for the given date when there is no other date or day being specified. This whole idea of finding out the day of the week for the given date is based on the concept of odd days. But before we learn anything about odd days, let us discuss a few basics of calendar. Calendar, as you all know, is an instrument which is used to indicate, keep and organize the days in a given year. You must be aware that we all follow the Gregorian calendar, which is also known as the Western calendar or the Christian calendar. And in the Gregorian calendar, the year starts on the 1st of January and ends on 31st of December. This calendar has been named after Pope Gregory XIII who designed it in the year 1582. So let me make it clear that in this session, whenever we use the word calendar, we would refer to the Gregorian calendar, which is internationally the most widely used civil calendar. Moving on, we know that a year is classified into two types or there are two types of years. One is an ordinary year and the second one is a leap year. So let us understand what is the difference in these two years. So as I've mentioned, there are two types of years, ordinary year and a leap year. An ordinary year has got 365 days. Whereas in a leap year, as you all must know, we have 366 days. So basically the difference here is a leap year has got one more day than an ordinary year, right? Ordinary year has got 365 days, whereas leap year has got 366 days. So one additional day when compared to an ordinary year. Let us now understand what is the need for a leap year. Why does it so happen that we have one extra day in a leap year, which you know occurs every four years. The reason that we have a leap year which occurs every four years is to keep our calendar in alignment with the earth revolution around the sun. Earth takes 365 days, 5 hours, 48 minutes and 46 seconds which is approximately 365 days and 6 hours or we can also equate it to 365 complete days and one quarter of a day. So this is the time required by the earth to complete one circle around the sun. Hence an ordinary year though it is considered to have 365 days it actually has 365 and a quarter of a day. Now in a leap year which occurs after every four years we have one extra day which is a result of four quarter days in those four years. So the point here is if we do not consider this one additional day every four years that is in a leap year we would lose six hours from our calendar every year which is about 24 days in 100 years. That is, if we assume that all the years are ordinary years without having any leap year and every year has got 365 days, then every 100 years we would lose 24 days. So to keep our calendar in alignment with the earth's revolution around the sun, we have a leap year which occurs every 4 years and this leap year has got one extra day. So this is the precise reason that we have a leap year with one extra day and it occurs every four years. It is there just to match our calendars with the earth's revolution around the sun. Let us now understand how do we decide whether a given year is an ordinary year or a leap year. The simple point here is that if the given year is divisible by four then it is a leap year. And if it is not divisible by 4, then it is to be considered an ordinary year. For example, 2014. How do we check if 2014 is a leap year or an ordinary year? Just divide 2014 by 4. If 2014 is exactly divisible by 4, then it becomes a leap year. Otherwise, it is an ordinary year. Now you know the divisibility for 4 uh, from the number systems topic. How do we check if a number is divisible by 4 or not? Just consider the last two digits. If the last two digits of the number is divisible by 4, then the whole number is divisible by 4. So here the last two digits in 2014 is 1, 4, 14. Now is 14 divisible by 4? No, 14 is not exactly divisible by 4. Hence 2014 is also not divisible by 4. 
and if 2014 is not divisible by 4 then it is an ordinary year so we can say 2014 is an ordinary year right likewise 2015 2015 you know the last two digits are 1 5 15 and 15 is not divisible by 4 hence this is not a leap year it becomes an ordinary year and when we look at 2016 what happens 2016 the last two digits are 1 6 16 and because 16 is exactly divisible by 4 we can say 2016 is also divisible by 4 and from the rules we know that if the given year is divisible by 4 then it becomes a leap year so 2016 will be a leap year likewise 2020 will be a leap year or for that matter 2004 was a leap year and so on so if a year is divisible by 4 then it becomes a leap year whereas if it is not divisible by 4 for example 1999 99 is not divisible by 4 hence this is an ordinary year right 1947 1947 is 47 divisible by 4 no this becomes an ordinary year right 1948 let's take 1948 you know that 48 is divisible by 4 hence 1948 becomes divisible by 4 and it makes it a leap year so simple point here is if the given year is divisible by 4 then it is a leap year like in all these cases 2016, 2020, 2004, 1948 and so on and if it is not divisible by 4 2014, 2015, 1999, 1947 or any number there for that matter if it is not divisible by 4 then it is to be an ordinary year right so 2014 becomes an ordinary year 2016 becomes a leap year but remember this rule is not applicable for century years now what do you mean by century year century year means 2000 1900 1800 2100 right century is 100 years one century is 100 years so for century years this divisibility by 4 is not applicable for a century year to be leap year it must be divisible by 400 for example if you look at 2000 the year 2000 is divisible by 400 hence 2000 the century year can be taken as a leap year whereas if you look at 1900 1900 is a century year now here if you go by the logic of last two digits that is two zeros here you know that 1900 is divisible by 4 right so if 1900 is divisible by 4 we cannot say that it is a leap year because it is a century year we have to check the divisibility by 400 now is 1900 divisible by 400 no 1900 is not exactly divisible by 400 so 1900 becomes a part of an ordinary year or a non leap year so the point is for century years 1700 1800 1900 and so on it will be a leap year if it is divisible by 400 otherwise it becomes an ordinary year for example let's say 1800 1800 is not divisible by 400 so 1800 becomes an ordinary year and if you take uh, for that matter 1200 is 1200 divisible by 400 yes 1200 is divisible by 400 so we can say 1200 is a leap year right so the point is a year to be leap year it must be divisible by 4 and for a century year to be leap year it must be divisible by 400 otherwise these are considered to be ordinary years which have got only 365 days so if the question says that is 1862 a leap year or not how do we check this is not a century year so we have to check the divisibility by 4 now the last two digits here are 62 is 62 divisible by 4 62 is not divisible by 4 hence this number here 1862 is not divisible by 4 so this becomes an ordinary year so 1862 is an ordinary year right if it is 1868 let's say is 1868 divisible by 4 yes 68 the last two digits 68 goes 17 times in 4 so we can say 68 is divisible by 4 hence 1868 is also divisible by 4 and if it is divisible by 4 then it becomes a leap year and if it is a century year for example 1100 was 1100 a leap year no this is a century year we have to check the divisibility with 400 1100 is not divisible by 400 so if it is not divisible by 400 we can say it is a non-leap year or an ordinary year but 800 the year 800 
is it divisible by 400 yes 800 is divisible by 400 and we are checking the divisibility by 400 because it is a century year so since 18 800 is divisible by 400 it becomes a leap year so 800 is a leap year 1100 is an ordinary year 1862 is an ordinary year and 1868 is a leap year so that's a simple logic to check whether a given year is leap year or an ordinary year let us now learn the concept of odd days which is the most important part in answering questions from calendars so as per the definition in a given period the number of days more than the complete weeks are called odd days so in any given period the number of days which are more than the complete weeks are referred to as odd number of days for example let's say a period of 10 days 10 days is equivalent to one week plus three days so we can say there are three odd days in a period of 10 days right if you say a period of 15 days in a period of 15 days it can be split as two weeks plus one day right 15 days equal to two complete weeks two weeks is 14 days and one additional day so this additional number of days after complete weeks is referred to as odd number of days so in a period of 15 days we have one odd day likewise if we say a period of 30 days in a period of 30 days we have how many weeks four complete weeks 30 days can be taken as four weeks and two days because four weeks is equal to 28 days so 30 days can be split as four weeks plus two days so in a period of 30 days we have two odd days likewise for any given period the number of days more than the complete weeks are referred to as odd days for example let's say a period of 50 days now in a period of 50 days we have how many weeks 7 complete weeks because 7 weeks is equal to 49 days so 7 weeks and 1 day so 50 days can actually be split as 7 weeks and 1 day so therefore there is 1 odd day in a period of 50 days likewise if you say a period of let's say uh, 49 days now 49 days is equal to 7 weeks and there is no additional number of days right so 7 weeks plus 0 days so we say in a period of 49 days we have 0 odd days there is no odd day right likewise in a period of 28 days 28 days is equal to 4 weeks there is no additional number of days right so there are 0 odd days in a period of 28 days so the simple point here is the number of days which are more than complete weeks in a given period are referred to as odd number of days right now let's move on let's say 100 days 100 days is equal to how many weeks 7 into 14 is 98 so 7 into 14 98 so there are 14 weeks which makes up 98 days and then two days more so this can be taken as 14 weeks plus two days so we have two odd days in a period of 100 days let's take an ordinary year right an ordinary year as you know has got 365 days right so uh, let's let's consider let's understand how many uh, odd days do we have in an ordinary year right now in an ordinary year you know we have got 365 days now these 365 days can actually be split as 52 complete weeks yes or no you must be aware that in a given year we have 52 complete weeks right so 365 days can be taken as 52 weeks plus one day yes or no 52 weeks is equal to 364 days 52 into 7 is equal to 364 so 52 complete weeks and one additional day so one odd day so we can say that in an ordinary year we have one odd day what happens in a case of leap year let's understand that in leap year as you all know leap year has got 366 days so these 366 days can be taken as 52 complete weeks plus two days 52 weeks again is equal to 364 days plus 2 will give you 366 so we say there are two days two odd days in a leap year so the point to be noted here is that in any ordinary year there is only one odd day and in any leap year there would be two odd days and in general for a given period the odd number of days can be calculated as uh, the number of days which are more than the complete weeks before we move ahead and calculate the number of odd days for longer periods of time that is uh, what will be the number of odd days in 100 years or the number of odd days in 200 years the number of odd days in 700 years the number of odd days in 2014 years and so on let us first understand how does this idea of the number of odd days help us in deciding the day of the week now the point to be noted here is that 1st January 
0001 AD that is 1st January of the first year was a Monday right we are now in the era of AD right 2014 AD so the 1st January of the very first year was a Monday which means a day before that was Sunday now you might be wondering how come we have something uh, before first day of the first year well that was the period of BC now we are into AD so that day which was before 1st January of the first year AD was Sunday and that is taken as our reference point now which means in a given period of time if we have zero odd days then the day is considered to be Sunday likewise when we are finding out the number of odd days for a given period and if it comes out to be one then that date is considered to be a Monday right it falls on Monday likewise if we have two odd days then it is taken as Tuesday three odd days will give us a Wednesday four odd days will give us Thursday five odd days means the day is Friday and if there are six odd days it means it would be Saturday likewise if there are again seven odd days is not possible because we cannot have seven odd days seven odd days is equal to one complete week so zero odd days again zero odd days will give us Sunday right if there are let's say nine odd days nine odd days is nothing but two odd days because nine odd days is equal to one week plus two days so two odd days will give us a Tuesday so this is the reference that we need to use while finding out the day of the week right so in a given period if we have let's say five odd days if you get five odd days then that last day of that period can be taken as Friday because five odd days refer to Friday right so for any given period when we find out the number of odd days from this particular point let's say from 1st January of the first year that number of odd days would give us the respective day of the week so for any given period when we calculate the number of odd days from our reference point what is our reference point the day before 1st January of the first year right so we are starting from 0 right so from that reference point when we find out the number of odd days we will get the day of the week let's say I have to find out what day will be 1st of May 2014 now I, if I can calculate the number of odd days from Sunday the first Sunday zeroth day right from that day if I can calculate the number of odd days up to 1st of May 2014 I can find out the day of the week right so based on the number of odd days we can pick up uh, the day accordingly from the given reference chart so this is an important part that you need to remember for finding out the day of the week simply remember that zero odd days is a Sunday one odd day is a Monday two odd days will be Tuesday and so on up to six odd days will give us a Saturday